In this video, we are going to look into the life and works of one of the greatest Indian scientists, Meghnath Saha. We are going to look into his life, his education, his struggle, and most importantly, how he formed the Saha equation or what is called the Saha ionization equation, which redefined the subject of stellar spectroscopy. Apart from that, we are also going to look into his other works, the legacy the importance of Saha equation in astrophysics and various other aspects. My name is Shanak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Wishing you a very happy new year and a warm welcome to watch this video. Have you ever looked into the night sky and you have seen the different colors of the stars? Some of them look a little bit brighter, some of them red, some of them a little bit bluish. Well, this colors of the stars have been discovered by a famous scientist and we are going to talk about that scientist today. His name is Meghnath Shaha and what he discovered is called Saha equation or Saha ionization equation which changed the entire perspective of looking into astrophysics and it gave birth to a new era of stellar spectroscopy. Hello, my name is Shaunak from Physics for Students and today I would be talking about the life of Meghnath Saha, one of the greatest scientists of India, his works, his challenges and how he found out the Saha equation which helps us to form and reform the stellar spectroscopy. You are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. A very happy new year to all of you and let us start this journey of knowing the life of one of the greatest Indian scientists, Meghnath Saha, his works and how he discovered Saha ionization equation and what is the importance of that particular formula. Located about 19 kilometers south of Dhaka, Bangladesh, there is a place called Bikrampur. Bikram in Sanskrit actually means courage and Pur means city. So you can call it as a city of courage. Now this is the time when we are talking about 1817 and 1890, a very poor shop owner, Jagannath Saha, was finding really difficult for his life to manage. He had a you know, small grocery shop which was not giving him enough profit, customers were not coming and already Bhuvaneshwari Devi, his wife, has already delivered four children and we, he has to drop out those children from education because of poverty. For Jagannath Saha being a father, his entire coincidence was continuously ruptured by the curse of poverty and uh, it was very difficult for both of them to run the family. He was praying to God every morning that let the new sun shine and let it bring radiance and let it overcome and eradicate the poverty from his life. 6th of October 1893, Bhuvaneshwari Devi gave birth to his fifth child. Now, when Jagannath Saha rushed to the delivery room, he was happy to see that uh, Bhuvaneshwari has, Devi has delivered a healthy child and his wife, uh, I mean to say Bhuvaneshwari Devi, is fine and safe. Now, this is the birth of Meghnath Saha and the name suggests Meghnath. Megh in Sanskrit means cloud and Nath means roaring. So you can tell Meghnath Saha's name as the cloud which roars. Now, Meghnath Saha, born in such a poor family, faced the same kind of a poverty and same kind of a fortune, uh, same kind of a fate. Will he be dropping out of his education? Will he be not being able to continue the education in future? Let us find it out what will happen in the next part of our video. Young Meghnath Saha completed his education in a primary school in the village of Shauratoli district in Dhaka. Following his early years of education, a serious problem ensued. Now what happened is that the next school where Meghnath Shah was about to go and take admission, it was around 10 kilometers from the uh, place where his family was. Now during that time, when we are talking 1870 to 1890, during that period, Shauratoli district of Dhaka was not carrying any transport. There were no cars, there were no transport. and uh, Travelling 10 km every day from this place to another place, it is out of question. It is out of question during that time. Every family member uh, suggested Meghnath Saha to drop his, uh, drop his education because travelling from 10 km every day was absolutely not a problem. 
But as you know that uh, there is a famous saying uh, which Virgil used in his famous book Aeneid. It is called Audantis Fortuna Juvat. Yes, Audantis Fortuna Juvat. It means that fortune favors the strong. Well, for Meghnath Saha, the fortune was favored by a doctor whose name was Ananta Kumar Das. Ananta Kumar Das. Now, this Ananta Kumar, if you see Meghnath Saha's later videos, you will see that he has thanked him on numerous occasions. Why? Because it was Ananta Kumar Das whose uh, uh, you know house was located nearby, and he gave the chance for to uh, uh, Meghnath Saha to carry on his education by staying at his home. But staying at his home was not free of cost, as you understand. The young Meghnath Saha has to mend his cows, has to wash his clothes, and he has to even cook his food. In return, Ananta Kumar Das allowed him to stay at home. So as you understand, for a champion, somebody who has got a determination as hard as a rock, nothing can deter him, nothing can make him move along. And he, doing all the course and all the errands of his life, finally completed his education. And he's not only completed his education, he came out of flying colors, scoring the best marks in English, in Bengali, in Sanskrit, and obviously mathematics. So Virgil's use of uh, Audentis Fortuna Juvat, which he used in the book uh, directing the attack, which Turnus was very optimistic to trying to diverge the enemy, was done by young Maynard Saha under extreme poverty and extreme conditions, staying at the home of Ananta Kumar Das, doing all the household uh, works, which was very tiring, yet he completed his education and came out out of flying colors in his life. But, as you understand, during that time, the mighty British Empire was occupied and the mighty British Empire was actually doing, a, a, you know, carrying an iron fist and the entire Bengal was swept with that type of a, a problem. Meghnath Saha carried that attitude of being a rebel. But what, what, what did happen to Meghnath Saha? Uh, is that that during that time, the British Empire's problem and political upheaval uh, uh, created a problem in his life? Let us find it out in the next part. The wave of the partition was already in the air. Lord Curzon, during that time with his iron fist, was implementing his rules across Bengal and young Meghnath Saha carried that type of a spirit of a rebel. But what happened during that time? The story says that Sir uh, Bamflight Fuller, Sir Bamflight Fuller, if I'm taking the name rightly, sorry for the wrong pronunciation, actually was the governor of Bengal and he was planning a visit to Meghnath Saha's uh, you know, uh, school. Now, young rebel, as you understand, Meghnath Saha actually carried on and uh, you know, uh, you know, got hold of few young people and they stopped the visit of Bamfred Fuller. They won't come into the class, into the school. This actually created a lot of problem and his scholarship was finally ended. As you understand during that time, because there was a British rule, uh, uh, the school uh, suspended him and it resulted to the end of his scholarship. But in spite of all these odds, as fortune favors the brave, something great happened during that time. What is it? Let's find out in the next part of our video. Is that in order to be a connoisseur of art and architecture and literature, you have to be a man of letter. History have said that Akbar, who was a patron of art, music and literature, actually was unable to write and read. So you did really do not need to be a man of letters in order to become, a, uh, you know, in order to patronize scientific research or literature. Now we get multiple instances. I just told about Akbar, uh, who was an emperor and as well as a philanthropist. One such person was Kishori Lal Chaudhary. Now he was born on the 29th of November 1848 and he established the Jagannath College in the name of his father which later came to be known as Jagannath University. He was an educated zamindar, although not educated in literal term, but he was a patron of teaching and schooling. Kishori Lal Jubilee High School uh, and College was established around 1887 where Meghnath Saha took admission and in the entrance examination which finally led him to here in Calcutta University in 1909. He was not only this time also cleared the test but came out in flying colors scoring the highest marks again in English, Bengali, Sanskrit and Mathematics. 
So right now in this video we have come to the phase when Meghnath sir has already completed his entire education and he has scored flying colors. He is about to go to Calcutta University, one of the best universities in the world. But what would happen when you go into a Calcutta University, a man coming, a person coming from a very remote village, will his mentality change? Will, will he get diverged into some kind of a scientific uh, research or kind of a scientific, uh, I would say, journey? Let us find it out in the next part of our video. Yes, what I told is exactly true. History has shown us and it is very important for all of us to remember those figures, industrialists and personalities which are, who has helped to from 19th of November 1848 and passed away on July 3rd, 1925. He was an educational zamindar, although not highly educated himself. He worked in education. He established Jagannath College on 4th of July 1884 in the name of his father, which is known as Jagannath University. He established Kishorilal Jubilee High School in its own name in 1887 at Bangla Bazar in Dhaka. He built a stage in Dhaka called Malanch for the development of theatrical practice. That theatre is now known as Lion Cinema. The Joy Lion Cinema or simply the Lion Cinema is a multiplex now located at Dhaka district in Bangladesh. It was reopened in Idul Fitr 2022 and it is one of the modern movie theatres in the country. He established a charitable hospital and a dispensary in Baliat which is still being run under government control. So you see this is the picture of the uh, Kishori Lal Jubilee High School and it is in reference to Meghnath Saha who studied there and the school offers education from kindergarten to class 12 and we will soon see that not only Meghnath Saha but there are other stalwart figures who studied and got established as famous physicists and mathematicians across the world in Kishori Lal Jubilee High School. It won't be unwise to mention a little bit about the history of this famous Jagannath University now, despite not gaining the status of university until 2005, Jagannath uh, as an educational institute inherits the history of a glorious past. In the course of more than one and a half centuries of journey, this institution deserves special mention in history for many of its glorious and significant achievements. The origin of today's Jagannath University lies in the establishment of a simple Brahma school Raja Ram Mohan Roy and Keshav Chandra Sen founded the Brahma Samaj on 20th of August 1828 in Calcutta. This also influenced some young enthusiasts of East Bengal to establish Brahma religion in Dhaka on December of 6th, 1846. The name Jagannath School was given by Kishori Lal Chaudhary who took it over in 1872 and renamed it after his father. In 1884, it was raised to a second grade college. Law was one of the first courses introduced. A common management committee administered the school and college until 1887 when the school section was separated to form the independent Kishori Jubilee School, now known as KL Jubilee School. The college started it with 48 students and in five years the role rose to 396. This is a kind of a small brief uh, account of uh, the school but we should also remember that the intermediate class was closed down in 1982 uh, and at the time night courses were kept only open for BA, BSc and BCom. In 1992 the college introduced night courses for MA degree pass, courses were abolished and still the number of students reached around 25,000. Once started its journey as a free primary school in course of time, it continued to play its role and become a trust for the dwelling place of higher education for the whole country including Dhaka city as well as for the people from all walks of life including middle class, lower middle class or even for the students from the poor families of the country. To tell the truth, this was the main characteristic of this institution that made this century old educational institution very very unique. As we are talking about philanthropist, it would be unwise to mention one name, David Hare. Right, so David Hare was born in Scotland uh, in around 1775 and he came back to India because he was a watchmaker. 
Now, David here uh, founded many educational institutes, including Presidency College, along with Raja Ram Mohan Roy. In 1913, when Meghnath Saha stepped inside the Presidency College in Calcutta, he found a totally new uh, world, totally unraveled in, in front of him. The dusty roads of the village, the rippling sound from the river, the dusty bullock carts was not there. And he was totally, you know, surprised to see the oblong shadows of this kind of a huge balcony where I'm shooting this video. You know, nice corridors, vacant eye-like windows, Presidency College, uh, uh, well, it is a, some kind of a totally different thing for uh, Meghnath Saha. In the evenings, the corridors were nostalgic, the ceilings were tall, and the doors were kept ajar. Possibly, he was waiting for a new thing to come in his life. Was it a scientific research? Was it a friend, a very, very special friend who would come on his way? Or, was it, uh, or is it a mentor or a guru who would come and change the course of the life? The struggle which Meghnath Saha has been encountering right from his childhood, born in Dhaka, Bangladesh, in a very remote village, coming back with his own talent to Presidency College. What was that he was waiting? What was that was waiting and lurking behind the corners of the Presidency College? Let us find it out in the next part of our video. Pursuing bachelors in science from the Presidency College, Meghnath Saha here came across a person whose name is Satyendranath Bose, a lifelong companion, a very good friend of his. And if you have not watched my video in, of Satyendranath Bose, I have given it in the i button. Please go ahead and watch because on the 1st of January, it was Satyendranath Bose's birthday. I have made a complete video on the life and contributions of uh, Satyendranath Bose and his discovery of Boson. Okay, let us come back to the topic what we are talking about. Now, he became a lifelong associate and a, also a very close Bose competitor. Was a legendary talent. Now, let us remember one thing that Satyendranath Bose was the uh, Meghnath Saha was the first person when he was a professor at the University of Allahabad. He came and told to um, uh, you know Meghnath Saha that there is a kind of a, a, a research going on in Germany on Planck's uh, Planck's length and Planck's formulation and quantum physics, etc. And why don't you write a paper? Now, based on Meghnath Saha's, uh, I would say, suggestion, it was Satyendranath Bose that he first wrote the letter to Albert Einstein working on his Boson formula. Albert Einstein did not reply to his first, form first uh, I would say, letter, and then he came and replied to second. Let us come back to the uh, second, uh, uh, what we are talking about. So, in Presidency College, Meghnath Saha and Satyendranath Bose, Gyanana Chandra Ghosh, Prafulla Chandra Day, a stalwart and myriad of stars, great uh, mathematician, great people and he started working with him. The year of graduation for both of them was 1913. Both were stars and both carried immense potential to make a change in the history of science. But remember, it was Satyendranath Bose who scored first, I would say, first in, 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 the, in, the, in the Presidency College and Meghnath Shah came after that. But that didn't stop their friend, uh, friendship. It, can, it went on and on and on. So this is the time when we are talking about uh, uh, he has completed, Meghnath has completed his uh, BSc from the Presidency College. But what after that? There was a time when something would come across and something great was cropping in Bengal. What is that? It changed the entire course of history. What is that? Let us find out in the next part of our video. In fact, the Presidency College was star-studded by myriad of scientists. One person it would be unwise to continue the video without mentioning his name, is Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee. He was a very eminent person, a philanthropist, a mathematician, a physicist, and he, is the he was the first person to pass out from Calcutta University with dual degree, with, uh, I would say, a one as a MA in, ma MA in mathematics and MSc in physics. Remember that Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee founded what is called the Bengal Institute, now called Jadavpur University, Calcutta University, as well as the University College uh, uh, it is called the University College of Science, which is called Raja Bajar Science College, a few kilometers away from where I am recording this video and standing here. 
So uh, and he had numerous contribution. He knew the entirely complete video on the contributions of Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee. Coming back to what I am talking now, Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee newly founded Rajabaja Science College, and he, it was creating a buzz. So eminent scientists joined the institute. They worked their great uh, constraints, and soon their work and research reached the glory, which reached up to the level of international fame. Now, in 1915, Meghnath Saha and Satyendra Bose both both graduated uh, 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 both graduated in masters. But remember, again, Satyendra Bose talked, and his course in MSc examination still is being unsurpassed. If you have seen my earlier video in Satyendra Bose, I have given the mark sheet also, where he scored a phenomenal mark, and his mark in MSc is still not being crossed by any anybody. So Meghnath Saha this time uh, graduated in applied mathematics and Satyendranath Bose was in uh, mixed mathematics. It is often called as a legendary batch of 1915. The alumni names uh, take are, uh, uh, with a great pride. Among the names of Saha and Bose, Ganendranath Mukherjee is also worth mentioning, whose paper Electric Synthesis of Colloids were published in the famous uh, journal of the American Chemical Society. The alumni also included Devendra Mohan Bose for his influential work in neutron physics and artificial uh, radioactivity. I would like to draw your attention on the screen of those nine great people, nine great physicists, mathematicians and chemists and I would call this to be one of the greatest and one of the most intelligent picture ever taken. Now history has followed with their inventions and discoveries, but I think that is a right time for us to just quickly understand who they are and how during the time of Meghnath Saha's time, how these people contributed immensely towards science. On your left hand side seated is this person, Meghnath Saha. So I won't be speaking much about him because we are already learning about that. Immediately to his uh, right hand side, this person, uh, Jagadish Chandra Bose, was a polymath with interest in biology, physics, botany, and writing science fiction. He was a pioneer in the investigation of radio microwave optics, made significant contributions to botany, and was a major force behind the expansion of experimental science on the Indian subcontinent. Bose is considered the father of Bengali science fiction. He invented the crescograph, a device for measuring the growth of plants. A crater on the moon was named in his honor. He founded Bose Institute, a premier research institute in India and also one of its oldest. Established in 1917, the institute was the first interdisciplinary research center in Asia. He served as the director of Bose Institute from its inception until his death. Next coming up is this great person, Kyan Chandra Ghosh. He was born in Giridi near Purulia district, British India the son of Ramchandra Ghosh. J.C. Ghosh belonged to a family of Maika owner and Maika Merchant. He had his initial schooling at Girid High School. Sir Ramchandra Ghosh was best known for his contribution to the development of scientific research, industrial development and technological education in India. J.C. Ghosh's other important contribution includes his extensive study of photocatalysts under the influence of polarized light and developments of fischer tropsch reaction for the synthesis of hydrocarbons. Dr. Ghosh made contributions in the field of application of differential thermal analysis as tool of the systematic study of solid catalysts. He was also known for his development of anomaly of strong electrolytes and the disassociation of ionization theory. Here is the person standing on the extreme left just behind Meghnath Saha, Snehomoy Datta, was born on 20th of October 1894 in Savar Dhaka, present day Bangladesh in undivided Bengal. Snehamoy's schooling was at Kishori Lal Jubilee School in Dhaka. Meghnath Saha was his classmate there. In 1907, after passing the entrance, he was admitted to Dhaka College. In 1920, he received a diploma from the Imperial College of Science in London. And in 1921, he received the Prem Chand Raichand Scholarship from Calcutta. University. He received DSc degree from London University in 1922 and he worked in industrial research program. His article investigation on the composition of printing metal alloys is particularly noteworthy. Well, this person requires no special mention 
Satyendranath Bose. I'm not going to explain much about him because you can look into his exclusive video, which I have given in the i button, a detailed uh, biography on Satyan Bose already given. Moving on next is this person, Devendra Mohan Bose, was an Indian physicist who made contributions in the field of cosmic rays, artificial radioactivity, and neutron physics. He was the longest serving director of Bose Institute. Bose was the nephew of the famous physicist Jagadish Chandra Bose, who laid the foundations of modern science in India. In, in 1914, D.M. Bose was appointed the Raj Peary Ghosh Professor of Physics in the newly founded Calcutta University College of Science. He was awarded the Ghosh Travel Fellowship for studying abroad and chose to study advanced physics for two years at the Humboldt University in Berlin. During this period, he worked on the development of new type of cloud chamber and was successful in photographing the tracks of recoiled protons produced during the passage of fast-moving alpha particles in the chamber. The results of his preliminary investigations were published in the journal Physics Journal in 1916. Well, this is a person is a great mathematician, Nikhil Ranjan Sen, born on 23rd of May 1894 was one of the initiators of the theory of relativity and the father of applied mathematics for India. Professor Nikhil Ranjan Sen did research over a wide range of subjects and topics. He did pioneering work in the fields of turbulence and cosmology. Apart from his own brilliant research contributions, he introduced new subjects in the postgraduate curriculum and inspired his young colleagues and research associates to take up original and challenging problems and solve them in modern physics in areas like relativity, astrophysics, quantum mechanics, geophysics, statistical mechanics, fluid dynamics, magnetohydrodynamics, elasticity, and ballistics. He was the fountainhead of inspiration to research workers in Calcutta University, and under his dynamic leadership, the Department of Applied Mathematics became a vibrant center of teaching and research and earned reputation throughout the country, which would be hard to match. It is said that the first fluid dynamics laboratory, FDL, in India was established by NRS. Well, the next person is this, I would say, J. N. Mukherjee. Uh, Professor Mukherjee's first work was done independently while he was an MSc student of the Presidency College. His works on colloids was published in the Journal of the American Chemical Society in 1915. In 1919, he and Gyanchandra Ghosh joined with University College London to work in the Physical Chemistry Laboratory under the charge of Professor F. G. Donan. Professor Mukherjee continued his research on colloids and his major line of work was to develop his theory of the electrokinetic double layer and its ionic constitution. Jane Mukherjee's work on the electrochemistry of colloids is considered highly significant. Well, Gyanendranath was, uh, was a student of Presidency College and received BSc and MSc uh, degrees of the Calcutta University. Based on his thesis uh, for MSc degree, a paper on electric synthesis of colloids was published in the Journal of the American Chemical Society. It is interesting to note that Satyendranath Bose, Gyanchandra Ghosh, Meghnath Saha, Prashant Chandra Mohananobis, Pran Krishna Parija, and Professor Mukherjee himself, amongst other illustrious personalities who were classmates, become, be, became general presidents of the Indian Science Congress Association. It is no strange co coincidence that development of scientific research and science in our country was at the initial stages a great deal due to the efforts of this group. The next person, N. C. Nag, unfortunately I am unable to find out any details of this great person. I would be very happy and I would be thankful to any one of the subscribers who can put out the details of this person, who was he, what is his greatest contribution and a little bit details about N. C. Nag. Well, these are the nine great stalwarts shining bright in the night sky and I would consider myself thankful that I have been able to deliver a little bit more about these people. Along with Meghna Saha, this is known as the legendary batch, legendary MSc batch of Calcutta University and this required a special attention in our learning about the life and works of Meghna Saha. Remember that apart from graduating and doing the masters from Presidency College and Rajavaja Science College, in 1917 he started, Meghna Saha started to work as a lecturer at Sir Atush, Ashutosh Mukherjee's University College of Science, now called Rajavaja Science College, where he taught quantum mechanics with Satyendranath Bose. Here comes another great contribution of Meghnath Saha. Meghnath Saha knew German, so did Satyendranath Bose. 
first time in India, Satyendranath Bose and Meghnath Shah translated Einstein's theory of relativity. I, I'll put up, you can see the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, cover of this, uh, of that uh, book over here. And this is the first time that Meghnath Saha and Satyendranath Bose made Einstein popular in India. Both of them knew German. Both of them were masters of science. I mean to say not in literary sense, but they were really the masters of science. And this book was edited by the great Prashanta Chandro Mohalanobis. Now, we will take a pause about this video. We have now moved into a time when Meghnath Sah has graduated and completed his master's with flying colors for Presidency College. He has got a great companion like Satyendranath Bose. But what did he actually made the formulation? Why is he known as one of the greatest scientists? Saha ionization equation coming up in the next part of our video. We now come to the central part of the video the Saha equation or the Saha ionization equation, which is the basic contribution of Meghnath Saha. We will look a little bit deep into the Saha equation without much of mathematical details. But before that, I want to ask you a question. How many times you have looked into the night sky and wondered? How often have you been bewildered after looking at the endless multitude of those shining dots and felt the inefficacious attempt of humanity to strive in every sphere. Well, even if you look at the sky, you will find the hues emitted from the stars are different. Some are reddish, some are blue. Uh, well, the question that the astronomers were facing during that time was this. Do the colors of the stars due to varying chemical compositions? Or what was the reason? Is that the reason that the spectral lines are different? Well, that was the basic question of the astronomers when they looked up into the night sky. We now talk about the pioneering work of Meghnath Saha, which is often termed as Saha ionization equation, which in simple terms is a relation between the spectra that we observe in the stars with their temperature. Well, spectrum means light that varies with wavelength and frequency. So the Saha equation helps us to calculate the relation between the light of stars that we see with their temperature. A calculation of the state of ionization and its change in star with a change in temperature and pressure. In other words, we can understand the reason that stars of different colors have different kinds of spectra, primarily due to the surface temperatures. Well, in physics, the Saha ionization equation is an expression that relates the ionization state of a gas in thermal equilibrium to the temperature and pressure. The equation is a result of the combining ideas of quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics and is used to explain the spectral classification of stars and it was developed by Meghnath Saha in 1920. Now, for a gas at high enough temperature or density, the thermal collisions of the atoms will ionize some of the atoms, making an ionized gas. When several or more of the electrons uh, that are normally bound to the atom in orbits around the atomic nucleus are freed, they form an independent electron glass cloud coexisting with the surrounding gas of atomic ions and neutral atoms. In turn, this generates an electrical field where the motion of the charge generates currents, making a localized magnetic field and creates the state of matter called plasma. The Saha equation describes the degree of ionization for any gas in thermal equilibrium as a function of the temperature density and ionization. Here you can see he published four papers, ionization in the solar chromosphere, elements in the sun on the problems of temperature radiation of gases and on a physical theory of stellar spectra. Now, he, uh, this Saha's paper on physical theory of stellar spectra was produced from the proceedings of the Royal Society and was published on the May of 2nd, 1921. This is just a snapshot from the website and the paper starts as the present paper embodies in an attempt towards a physical explanation of the ordered 
prediction in the spectra of stars, a subject in which pioneering work has done by the late Sir Norman Lockyer, but which was worked up with systematic thoroughness at the Harvard College Observatory under the lead of the late Professor E. C. Pickering and Miss A. J. Cannon. So now we go into learning a little bit what is called a stellar classification. Now, in astronomy, stellar classification is the classification of stars based on their spectral characteristics. Electromagnetic radiation from the star is analyzed by splitting it with a prism or diffraction grating into a spectrum exhibiting the rainbow of colors interspersed with spectral lines. Now, each line indicates a point of a particular chemical element or molecule with a line strength indicating the abundance of the element. The spectral class of stars is sh a short code primarily summarizing the ionization state giving an objective measure of the photosphere's temperature. Now most of the stars are currently classified under the morgan kennan system using the letters O, B, A, F, G, K and M and a sequence from the hottest to the coldest which this particular uh, illustration will give you an idea. Each letter class is then subdivided using a numeric digit, 0 being the hottest and 9 being the coldest. Now, apart from classification of the spectral class and due to this temperature from 0 or O, P, A and so on, uh, in the MK system, a luminosity class is also added to the spectral class using Roman numerals. Uh, this is based on the width of the certain absorption lines and this figure would give you a better idea. So, uh, I, A, or 0 are used for hypergiants. I have underlined it, boxed it in red. Uh, these are very rare type of star that has been extremely high luminosity, mass size and mass loss because of its extreme stellar uh, winds. Second would be class 1 for supergiants. These are mostly mass massive and most luminous stars. Class 3 are basically what are called super uh, uh, class 3 is what's called bright giants and class 3 for regular giants and uh, you can find class 4 for sub giants these are uh, you know uh, a star that is brighter than the normal main sequence star of the same spectral class but not as bright as bright stars class 5 for main sequence stars sub dwarfs and so on now well, this is the way in which we define or we divide the class now we come to the central part that is the Saha equation. Now, Fraunhofer lines are basically a set of, uh, you know, I would say uh, uh, spectral studies. The spectrum of star manifest of the general characteristic of the Fraunhofer spectrum. All spectral lines indicate certain uh, uh, elements to be much stronger than the el other elements. Interestingly, the strength of the same element is also found to vary continuously in the spectra of different stars. Now, when the atomic and radiation theories were still unknown, we are talking of that time, astrophysicists were tempted to interpret the spectral sequence due to a difference in the initial compositions of the stellar material. But today we know that this temperature is due to discrepancy is due to uh, temperature differences. Now, in 1920, Saha ionization theory depicted an important application of the atomic theory of Bohr. Here is a picture or illustration which would give you an idea of what is ionization. It is basically the phenomena in which the electron orbit the nucleus in an atom gains enough energy and gets stripped of the atom. Now, what happened is that stars have different surface temperatures which are responsible for ionization and the Saha gave us a mathematical formula that describe how the excitation and ionization in the stellar atmospheres are actually dependent on the conditions of temperature and pressure prevailing in those stars and not just the composition. So this is very important that the conditions of temperature and pressure prevailing in those stars are not just the composition. Saha's equation actually laid the foundation of a significant branch of astrophysics called stellar spectroscopy. Stars have different surface temperatures which are responsible for the ionization of the atoms of different elements which makes us see the different spectral lines. So I hope this part is very clear that the excitation and ionization in the stellar atmospheres are dependent 
actually depend on the conditions of temperatures and pressure, but not just only on the composition. Here is how the uh, Saha equation looks like. Just briefly example, this is the density of the atom. This is the density of the electron. This is the degeneracy state. This is the de Broglie wavelength. And this is the energy required to remove the electron. And this is the Boltzmann constant. And this is the temperature. So the number of density of ions means when an atom becomes charged, it may recombine with an electron and become neutral again. So as the number of electrons increase, the ionization ratio decreases. In the simplest hydrogen plasma, the number of electrons is equal to the number of ions. Ionization energy as the temperature of gas is raised, the degree of ionization of gas remains low until the ionization energy is greater than the gas temperature. What is the temperature? Afterwards, the degree of ionization, that is the ratio of the temperature uh, density of ions the, to the number of density of neutral atoms of a gas in thermal equilibrium, increasingly abruptly with an increase in temperature, the gas actually becomes plasma. So this is basically the central part of uh, the contribution of Meghnath Saha to find out Saha equation, which is very, very important. And it actually showed us that stellar atmospheres are dependent on the conditions of temperature, just not on the compositions. This was done initially by the detection of Fraunhofer lines and then with Saha's ionization equation. That we have understood the mathematics and little bit details about the Saha equation. Uh, this is the right time that we should understand the real importance of the Saha equation. So, uh, what happens is that the first and foremost importance of the Saha ionization equation uh, lies in astrophysics. Now, it combined quantum and statistical mechanics uh, to classify the stars as per well their spectra. For an astrophysicist, the spectrum of a star reveals a lot of information. It helps to decode a lot of unknown facts that remain hidden on the stellar surface. Now, uh, this is the book uh, written by S. Roseland, and in this book, Theoretical Astrophysics, published by Oxford University Press in 1939, he wrote that the impetus of astrophysics by Saha's work can scarcely be overestimated, as nearly all later progress in this field has been influenced by it and much of the subsequent work has the character of refinements of Saha's ideas. Further as we go, what we find is that uh, the first time we receive something, an uh, equation that makes precise measurements, by measuring neutral atoms, we could now take care of ionized atoms. But here comes an American astronomer, Henry Norris Russell, who took a keen interest in Saha's works. He started verifying his works at the Mount Wilson Observatory in Los Angeles, USA. He found the presence of lines of alkali metals, which was earlier shown in Saha's works. Impressed by his work, Russell exchanged many letters with him, praising his great work. Then it was this person with Walter S. Adams, Russell applied Meghnath Saha's theory of ionization to stellar atmospheres and determine elemental abundances and confirming Cecilia Payne-Gabotskin's discovery that stars are composed mostly of hydrogens. So this actually confirms and shows the importance of Saha equation and how Henry Norris Russell observing those uh, stars in the Mount Wilson Observatory finally came to the physical understanding and proof of Saha's equation. Meghnath Saha was nominated twice for the Nobel Prize by the great physicist Arthur Compton. He founded the Indian uh, Science News Association. He also founded the journal which is called Science, which aimed towards scientific awareness among the general public. He emphasized the fact using science and technology knowledge of the masses. He wrote some books also. One is this one, The Principle of Relativity with Satyendranath Bose, Calcutta University around 1920. He was translating Einstein's paper on theory of relativity. Number two, Treatise on Heat, Treatise on Heat. Number three, Junior Textbook on Heat. Number four would be a Treatise on Modern Physics and My Experience in Soviet Russia. 
Now, Dr. Saha emerged as one of the greatest leaders and supporter of scientific thought with a vision to educate the mass. Now, here I would like to tell something that we see, we have seen a lot of scientists in India and abroad, etc. But Meghnath Saha is one of the greatest scientists among others in India who has taken an effort and his basic target was to educate the mass. Now, the sole purpose of translating Einstein's theory of relativity from Germany to India, apart from, <coughs> sorry, the scientific endeavors, was also to let know people about the uh, theory of relativity. Now, as you understand that until the mass understands, until the general public really understands about your theory, you will be only acknowledged and applauded in the house of eminent people and scholars, right? Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics was founded in 1943 in Calcutta. He also designed it what is called the Damodar Valley Project and he died on 16th of February 1956 and he died out of a heart attack when he was in New Delhi. Now he was then going to Rashtrapati Bhavan and he suddenly suffered from a cardiac arrest and he was taken to the hospital but unfortunately, he expired before reaching the hospital. Uh, the doctor says that he was suffering earlier even from, the, uh, from something which is called hypertension. And that is the reason that he died. Studies involve the spectral elements of stars. He himself emerged as a star in the world of astrophysics. We have seen the huge impact Meghnath Saha's equation and ionization and stellar spectroscopy has made to uh, the world of science, how we are all indebted and how astrophysics has been benefited by the uh, Saha equation and the works that Meghnath Saha has done. Just as a dying star lives behind a huge scope of study, so did Meghnath Saha's death after his death also. He left behind a legacy. He left behind an enormous scope of uh, uh, further research and study. Generations and generations, we will keep on studying the enormous contribution of Meghnath Saha and we will be thankful and indebted for his enormous contribution. Whenever we will see a star which is shining, you know, far, far away, we will always remember him because the stars shining, the colors, the different gradients and the way a star shines will always be remembered and that will be remembered by his phenomenal work that is the Saha equation or the Saha ionization equation. So Meghnath Saha died being a star, dies, leaves behind an enormous scope for all of us to learn and more and more. Saha's equation and Saha's contribution in the history of science will always be remembered. Now, I cannot see a star right now because I'm shooting this video in a bright sunshine and a clear day. But whenever you see a star and whenever you see that the stars are shining and the colors are changing, remember it is because we know now why it does so because of the Saha ionization equation. And we, the next generation, are always indebted, immensely thankful for the work that uh, Meghnath Saha has done. Thank you very much for watching this video on Physics for Students. I hope you have enjoyed. Please put up your comments, click on the like and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get all the notification from Physics for Students. This is Shaunak signing off from Physics for Students, wishing you all the best for the coming days to pass and let me know how you like the video, promising you again to come back soon in Physics for Students with yet another fascinating video. Till then, best wishes and goodbye.
Thank you for watching this video. We appreciate your time and patience. If you want to connect with us and provide further feedback, comment or suggestions, please email us at contact.physicsforstudents at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. See you soon in the next video.